Good day there, once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, come to you guys with some more Planet Side 2 content. So, as of late folks, you may have been on the defense at a base when suddenly, a stream of hostiles comes at you from a new direction. Despite your surprise to the zerg of enemies that have now confidently flanked you, it's no big deal. It's just a newly deployed Sunderer somewhere in the distance that is easy to deal with. Just use the flow of enemies to determine where it is and use some tank mines to turn it into a smoldering collection of nanites. But wait, you have reached the location of the area that you feel as though the Sunderer should be and there is nothing there? You're standing there, staring in confusion as nothing exists where you think the Sunderer should be only to decide that you are imagining things and move along to continue looking for the Sunderer in other locations. Well, what if I told you that there was something there? and that it was a Sundra, a deployed one at that. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be taking a look at the new Sundra cloaking module that is available in the defensive slot for the Sundra. Now some of you, much like myself, are going to be wondering where the hell this Sundra cloaking module is actually located in the store. Well, if you want to unlock the Sundra cloaking module for yourself, it is actually the fifth level of the Sundra stealth certification that will cost you 1000 certs. So to clarify, you will have to cert out the Sundra stealth module to level 4 before you can unlock the Sundra cloaking module, which is present at level 5, and therefore it will realistically cost you 2330 certs to unlock. So what does this so-called Sundra cloaking module actually do? Well, as the name suggests, whenever the Sundra is deployed, it will be cloaked and around about as visible as an infiltrator that is on the move when he is cloaked. So you don't have to worry about the Sundra being in a deep cloak state, making it extremely hard to find. However, something else that is very interesting for this new addition is the fact that whenever the Sundra is deployed, it also deploys a bubble-like field that will cloak any infantry that happen to be in the area, no matter the class of the user. Have you ever been scared of cloaking max suits and heavy assaults? Well, then I'm afraid your worst nightmares have come alive, my good friends. So, the concept of this cloaking module is basic enough and comes with a clear-cut purpose of providing players with a new way to set up Sunderers in a stealthy manner to prevent them from being spotted. Essentially, providing the direct opposite playstyle from the Sunderer Shield module, which aims to turn the Sunderer into a glowing juggernaut that can take a fair amount of hits, whereas the Sunderer cloaking module aims to keep the Sunderer in a stealthy state for as long as possible, but once it is spotted, it's fairly easy to take out. Now whilst the purpose of this new module is fairly straightforward, there are also many questions that surround this fairly unique module and how it interacts with other factors of the game. So after doing some testing with this module, we can list off a range of fairly basic to complex characteristics that this cloaky module follows. So kickstarting things off nice and easy, once the Sunderer is hit by a weapon of armor piercing potential, the Sunderer's cloak will be deactivated instantly, meaning that the bubble that cloaks infantry will also collapse and uncloak everybody in the area. The EMP grenades will also disable the Sunderer's cloaking module, as well as having its standard effects applied to infantry and deployables caught in the blast radius. Using the weapons on the Sunderer will also decloak it and disable the field, however using small arms fire on the Sunderer will not decloak the Sundra. In the event of the Sundra decloaking, it will take about 4 seconds for the Sundra to recloak assuming it takes no extra damage. Every time the Sundra does take damage, the timer to recloak the Sundra will be reset. The same thing applies to infantry who happen to be within the bubble of the Sundra cloaking module, where if they fire their weapon or take damage, they will go into a 4 second cooldown before they cloak again, and if they take any more damage, or if they fire their weapon again in the process of this cooldown, they will also have their timers reset. The same movement to cloak opacity ratios for the infiltrator cloak applies to the individuals caught in the Sunderer's cloak. To explain, you will be more visible when moving and cloaked in comparison to being still and in crouch, which will in turn put you in a state known as deep cloak. If you want to learn more information on the mechanics of cloaking then there is a card on your screen currently taking you to a relevant video. When you are within the cloaking field of the module as an infantry member, 
shooting, taking damage, knifing, using the medical applicator or nano armor tool, placing deployables and using regeneration or medical kits will decloak you. Any deployables placed within the cloaking bubble will not cloak themselves and whenever an engineer jumps on a mana turret of some description within the bubble, their person will instantly decloak as long as they sit on the turret. A very interesting factor of this cloaking module is that using abilities for the most part will not decloak the individuals. The abilities that follow this trait are the light assaults jump jets, the heavy assaults overshield, the combat medics nano regen device and the max suits empire specific abilities and charge. If you really want to, you can use the Infiltrator's Cloak in the bubble, but it is a fairly redundant decision. To further build on this factor, the Heavy Assault's Overshield and the Light Assault's Jump Jets give off small visual cues that they have been activated when the user is within the bubble, with the Heavy Assault's Shield appearing around the user whilst they remain cloaked, which does give off a very uh, trippy effect that makes the user look like a ghost, and the flame produced by the Light Assault's Jump Jets will appear for a split second upon activation, but then will disappear instantly. On the other hand, the Combat Medic's Nano Region device and the Aegis Shield available to the NC Max give off no visual cue to being activated when they are inside the bubble. As you can see here, my friend has his Aegis Shield active, but it only appears when he leaves the bubble, and it's a fairly instantaneous process as well. Much like the Infiltrator's Cloak, the Sundra when in this cloak state is extremely hard to be seen through HS and V scopes, so keep that in mind when you're rocking these kinds of optics. However, in comparison to the Infiltrator's Cloak, if you take damage as an infantry member within the Sundra's cloaking bubble and then manage to get yourself recloaked, your shields will still regenerate to full capacity even when you are cloaked, where the Infiltrator's Cloak will require you to uncloak to regenerate your shields and then cloak again. That's a very interesting fact. That I find personally. The same thing goes for regeneration kits. If you cloak while a regeneration kit is at work, you will still receive the granted health. The bubble of the cloaking module does come with multiple LODs, or levels of detail, that change based on the distance that you are from the shield and whether or not you are moving to or away from the Sundra. Now, if you're moving towards the Sundra, the maximum LOD will become present at the 35 meter mark, which you can see based on the distortion of the squad beacon that is within the bubble. But if you're moving away from the Sundra, the LOD appears to decrease beyond the 60 meter mark. As you can see here, the squad beacon's beam becomes a lot straighter and a whole lot less distorted once I move beyond the 60 meter mark here. Finally, and on the topic of the visibility of the cloaking module, if you point a laser sight to the cloak sundra itself or to the edges of the shield, you will notice a wavering effect on your laser sight. However, pointing a laser sight directly into the bubble and not onto the sundra itself will not waver the laser sight, so keep that in mind when you're hunting for sneaky sundras. This wavering effect that is applied to a laser sight when it's pointed at a cloaked sundra tends to last out to 100 meters before the effects become somewhat unnoticeable. Whew. So that was a lot of information for a short amount of time, and some of the quirks that we discussed may not serve any use to you personally, but all of these quirks do help to shape how this new Sundra Cloaking module operates and where it can be used effectively. The first piece of advice I could give to you when it comes to using this new module is that whenever you deploy the Sundra, lock it. Make sure that nobody else can actually get into the Sundra. Now how do I lock it I hear some of you asking? Well you hit page down by default to bring up your vehicle permissions tab and then select lock. This will prevent anyone of getting into your Sundra while it is cloaked and unleashing hell with the guns, all the while leaving the Sundra completely exposed and completely defeating the purpose of the Sundra module itself. And finally, whenever you are deploying the Sundra, be sure to play to the strengths and purpose of the module by not placing it in obvious locations. Placing it in flanking positions or strange nooks and crannies is going to get the better result, as opposed to placing it in the commonly used Sundra locations that you see all the time. To clarify, if you place a cloaking Sundra in a predetermined Sundra garage, then you are doing it horribly wrong. And guys, with all that said, that's going to wrap up today's review on the Sundra Cloaking Module. I do hope you guys found today's video enjoyable, and maybe you learned a thing or two about this new Sundra Cloaking Module. If you did, then backhanding that like button would be greatly appreciated. And if you happen to enjoy today's video, you find yourself backhanding the like button, and maybe you're new to the channel, then why don't you go around backhanding that subscribe button whilst you're at it to keep up to date with the content in which I am releasing here. As always, folks, there's a bunch of social media links in the description down below that you can use to get into contact with me, and I'd love to hear your opinions on this Sundra Cloaking Module, do you think it's a valid introduction to the game, do you hate its guts, or have you had some really interesting moments with it thus far? 
Once again, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.